Now we've got something more gnarly. It's gonna take some wheel speed. Look at that width. Oh! We got a casualty, guys. Check that out. That's pretty gnarly. Certainly approaching the winch. You can hear. Oh, where did the drone go? Shit, did I just crash it in the water? You want to stop for a sec? Oh, bummer. Well, that was pretty stupid. I just crashed a drone into a literal lake. Now I got, of course, trudge through the lake to get back to the Bronco. And it got so deep, I actually got it down my uh, waders. I've got such a cool video for you today because I am out here in beautiful northern Michigan taking a look at the new Ford Bronco Everglades. This is such a cool opportunity because we are heading through some super deep mud, through some pits, through some uh, incredibly aggressive terrain to see what the Everglades has to offer off-road. Now what is the Everglades? Well this is kind of the overlandy, I almost want to say like purpose-built long distance off-road cruiser. So this is a Bronco with a Sasquatch package. So we have the 35 inch tall tires and then they add all sorts of goodies to it. So it's got a snorkel, it's got a winch, it's got a deeper fording depth, which is great for money, which is what we're doing today. It's got this really cool roof rack, uh, roof rack up top, which would be a nice for like a, a rooftop tent and some unique colors, stickers and that kind of thing. Now a couple other things you might notice. First of all, I'm wearing these ridiculous waders. I don't look cool in them. Um, and they are very interesting actually. I didn't know waders were one leg at a time. So this is Lake Huron, so if they don't work, it's gonna get real cold. Are they waterproof past the boot? Are they? All right, I'll see you in Canada. I'm just gonna keep going. I don't know why I told you that. But one thing that does matter, the fender is different on the Everglades compared to any other Bronco. It's a different fender than the Raptor or a standard Bronco. And you know that because the flare is squared off on the Everglades, where on a standard Bronco it's round, and on a Raptor it looks like half of one of those little plastic pools. Story for another day, but overall, this is the best looking fender of the Bronco lineup. All right, next up, the rock crawl section. We've got front and rear lockers engaged. We've got the spotter on the radio. And we're about to see what happens. I'm in rock crawl mode. I'm gonna two foot it, see how the two three likes two footing. Take it nice and easy. Let the vehicle do the climbing. Just like that. Feels really pretty good. Gonna take a nice and easy, good visibility out of the Bronco Everglades. More driver coming. Guy knows my name, that's pretty cool. Stay that way. Yeah. Good two footing, good two footing control. Really is good. Keep coming, that's good. Hate that. Right on the rock rail there. And there it goes. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Ooh. Does not feel super, super good, but you know, we made it work one way or another. So I initially thought we were hitting the rock rail up that obstacle, but it was actually the rear control arm mount. Now this is a common area for Broncos to hit. It's kind of the low hanging fruit, but it's got a little bit of a skid on there. So uh, no damage done. The Bronco Everglades is only available in one cab and one roof configuration. The four door model with the mold in color hardtop. Off-road in the Ford Bronco Everglades, what is it like? Well, it's pretty similar to any other Bronco with the Sasquatch package. So we still have these Goodyear Territory MT tires and they're 35s, which is, well, you put 35s on anything and it's gonna do pretty well. You put 35s on a vehicle with locking differentials and you do the math, you're probably gonna have something pretty special and this is pretty special. Now I've complimented Ford on their lockers and I will continue to do so because they are probably the best in the industry. They are so quick and easy to engage. I've spent so much of my life staring at 
Tacoma lockers flashing and flashing and flashing, trying to get them to engage forward, backwards, you know, twirling a moose above my head. Like, it's just, it's so much work. On a Bronco, you click the button, the light turns on. Big rock on the driver's side. I think I got that. Um, it's, you click, you push the button, light turns on, and then once you get the icon in the uh, gauge cluster, then your locker is engaged. But it's like within seconds of clicking the button. It is so fast and easy to use. Uh, that guy just did a little hop. Turn the radio back on just in case he's like, there's a bear. <laughs> you never know. Check out my buddy Kristen enjoying the, the shores of Lake Huron. How is it, buddy? It's a little cold. Yeah, is it? <laughs> a little bit. This is pretty cool though, I mean, you can drive, uh, this trail has taken us right up to the shoreline and then it uh, continues back in through the trees over there. Very fun. All right, so Kristen's driving down this nasty rock crawl section. She is one badass off-roader. I think two pedal driving is key yep. when you're doing the rock crawling, but it was really smooth. Real smooth. You did a great job. Front of rear lockers, no stay bar disconnect though. So like the Badlands, our first edition, right? You can get them with the, uh, the sway bar disconnect in the front and I would really appreciate that just for the ride quality even. Um, I'd love if they did that on the uh, on the Everglades, but no luck. Uh, it does have the turn assist though, so if we're making tight turns, it'll break that inside tire. Now overall, off-road, pretty good visibility. I like the sights on the edge of the, uh, the hood. Thank you for grabbing that. Uh, the sights on the edge of the hood, which kind of help guide you through the trees. It's really nice, got a big windshield, it's got big windows, it's got big tires. Uh, we're not aired down very far, they didn't want the tire pressure light kicking on, they said. I probably would have gone down closer to like 20 or 25. We're sitting right around 35, which is a little bit, a little bit jiggly. You know, I'm a 90 year old at heart, I would like a softer ride if we've gone down to 20. And then of course, in the deep stuff, it would probably help with traction. But uh, we've used the skid plates, boy have we used the skid plates, and they work well. Um, no front camera on the Everglades. Something worth note, uh, and I'd be curious to see how they'd integrate one, if they do integrate one going forward, because, I mean, with that winch just stuck on the front there, how do you get one around there? It's gonna be an interesting question, but we can't, we can't wait to see what they do there. So I just spoke to some of the engineers, and they told me some interesting things about this winch mount and winch design. Now, it's a Warren Xeon 10S. 10 means that it is a 10,000 pound rated winch. S means it's synthetic but it's actually different than a Xeon 10S you can buy from Warren off the shelf. So they've actually uh, changed around the powder coating on the winch to make it a little bit more durable for a long-term corrosion to meet the Ford standards. And they also changed some of the mounting hardware as well. It's got a different fair lead and a different hook. But what I think is really interesting is because this is a winch design that is mounted from the factory, they had to recertify this vehicle for crash test safety worthiness, which is a crazy expensive project. So the Ford Bronco Everglades is underneath pretty similar to the Black Diamond, but of course with a Sasquatch package. So you get stuff like the marine grade vinyl seats, the uh, vinyl flooring, which is really cool. You get all the underbody protection. Obviously this has like a different wheel and tire package than like a Black Diamond, but that is what it is most closely related to. Now we got something more gnarly. It's gonna take some wheel speed. Look at that width. Oh! We got a casualty, guys. Check that out. That's pretty gnarly. This is a, uh, a Ford Pro driver, by the way, in this lead Bronco. He's gonna go ahead and give it another go, and you can see they maxed out the ground clearance on this rut. Over 11 inches of ground clearance, by the way. They're gonna give it another go. Come on, Everglades. Wow. Oh, more trail damage though. Rear bumper. That was nuts, guys. 
So these Broncos have a steel front bumper, but the rear bumper is mostly plastic and that did take the brunt of the tree. But you can see the bodywork is actually remarkably intact and that's one of the beauties of the Everglades, right? So you rip off the fender, not a big deal. It's just held in with a couple of thumb screws, pull that puppy off and you got a new fender flare. The bumper, probably a little bit more of a job, but once again, shouldn't be that hard to replace. The important bits, the paint, the doors, even the quarters, they look pretty good. All right, here goes the next guy. Look at that, a lot of wheel spin. All right, let's see, did this guy make it through? Let's see. Oh, a little bit of damage there too, so we're ripping off fenders. And this is kind of the issue, right? Even though the Everglades is narrower than something like a Raptor, it still is a wide vehicle. See, so something like this, I might think that maybe even a, hate to say it, but a Wrangler with the slightly narrower width might be better. Oh, go, Kristen, go! Oh, high centered. High centered. I think it's time for a winch demo. Kristen, how did that feel? It felt great. <laughs> it's gonna be fun to see the winch demo. I think so too. Stand by. That was a good effort though. You really, you almost got it. All right, so Kristen's grabbing the winch controller. Nice, buddy. So says, how much uh, winch cable do we have here? We have 100 feet of synthetic line. 100 feet? Yeah. It's pretty good. So we're gonna make it up to that tree up there where the, I have the tree saver. All right, so we're gonna take, take the winch. It was engaged, we went to free school. So we're gonna pull the winch out now and go all the way to the tree. Now, Seth, when you guys were developing these, did you test the winch to beyond what Warren would test it? Uh, we did from a corrosion standpoint. It's still rated for 10,000 pounds. So it should be more than capable of pulling this out. Absolutely. I think with not a whole lot of effort, that puppy should just crawl its way out of this gnarly mud hole. And there it goes. Very cool. And this, of course, is why you buy the Everglades self-recovery. Such a great feature, right? I mean, if you're out here by yourself, uh, I mean, you could use a high lift jack, you might be able to dig yourself out, but without a buddy or a toe strap, you'd be kind of stuck. Or if you had a buddy that was uh, in that situation and you wanted to winch them out, you'd have a lot of control that that winch offers. Nicely done, Kristen, that was beautiful. So we got my man Eric here from Car and Driver. How you doing, buddy? Good, doing well. So what do you think of the Everglades? Are you happy with it? Uh, super impressed so far. I mean, honestly, like few obstacles that have stopped us other than this one all day. So, I mean, got the winch, you really can't get stuck. So it's, uh, it's about all you need. So here in Northern Michigan, you really start to understand maybe why you wouldn't want the Bronco Raptor on some of these trails because it gets pretty narrow in spots. Oh man, I gotta run. The car's running away from me. And it can be uh, kind of a challenge to squeeze the Bronco through. All right, let me in. The big news on the Everglades is certainly the winch and the snorkel. So this goes down the line with every other Bronco and then it kind of breaks off into its own little area where they install a factory worn Xeon 10S winch and the snorkel, which is bi-directional actually. It's got these little plates in it so you can have it suck air from the front or pull air from the back, depending on the kind of terrain you're going through. Um, and I think it looks quite good. It's a really well integrated snorkel, kind of crawls up the A pillar very elegantly. Um, you know, some snorkels are kind of stuck on and they don't look right, but this one obviously is made and engineered for the Bronco by the Ford team. So the snorkel looks really good. And uh, they've actually also extended the breather tube. So it's got an additional 87 millimeters of breather tube lift in the front and then over 50 millimeters of breather tube lift in the rear. And that gives us a total fording depth of 36.4, which is roughly three inches more than like a standard Sasquatch equipped Bronco. That was up through the doors actually, that was pretty cool. Um, but we have 36.4 inches total. I mean, with those extended breather tubes, you were less worried, worried about important stuff getting filled up with water, which is really, really great. Gotta clean out these brakes a little bit though. They're feeling a, a little less grabby than they should. Here goes the next crossing. Up to and past the rear bumper even. Oh, look at that. Freaking awesome. I also like that Ford is calling this a snorkel and not a desert air intake like Toyota. Now, of course, Toyota's reasoning was, oh, it's just supposed to draw on clean air when you're cruising through the desert, which I kind of understand. 
it's cool that, you know, four calls a snorkel and now we're going through stuff where having that intake up high would be nice. And keep in mind, the idea of a snorkel is not that you can go up to the windshield and water. It's just like when you're going through that stuff, you get splashed back over the hood, you get debris and water um, coming up, you know, pretty high and you don't want to be sucking up that water that's being splashed above the intake when it's underneath the hood if the water's coming up through the hood. So it's not to go all the way to your head, it's just to kind of get a fresh supply of clean air. The Ford Bronco Everglades is only available in the 2.3 liter four cylinder with the 10 speed automatic, the horsepower rating 300 and the torque 325 foot pounds. It's not available in the 2.7 twin turbo. It's not available in the Raptor three liter twin turbo. A couple of reasons for this one fuel economy. And the second reason they told me that winch adds about a hundred pounds to the front end of the vehicle, which coincidentally is about the same weight penalty you get by going from the 2.3 to the 2.7. And we are going through a venerable lake. Wouldn't you say buddy? I would say it's like a river. This it's like a river of Broncos. Unbelievably cool. Let's see how deep we get. Certainly approaching the winch. You can hear. Oh, where did the drone go? Shit, did it just crash into the water? Let me stop for a sec. Oh, bummer. You got your waders on. <laughs> well, that was pretty stupid. I just crashed a drone into a literal lake. Now I got, of course, trudge through the lake to get back to the Bronco. And it got so deep, I actually got it down my uh, waders. Well, a huge thank you to Ford for letting us come out here too beautiful Michigan and test out the Everglades. Not quite Florida, but we did get some pretty severe mud and it was awesome that they were willing to, you know, let us put their vehicles at such big risk, which is really cool. They really want to prove how capable these vehicles are. Now, is it better off-road than a Sasquatch Bronco? I mean, it's about the same, right? You do have the lockers, you don't have the stay bar disconnect, and you do have like the 35 inch tall tires that a Sasquatch would have. So it's pretty, pretty on the money. It's not really all that different off road, but you do get that amazingly cool snorkel and the factory installed winch with all the safety improvements that that comes with. Because of course they can't just slap a winch on from the factory and sell it to, to us without, you know, making sure it passes all the crash safetyness. So they went through all that money. They did all that research. So you know, you're getting a factory equipped safe vehicle. that's going to last a long time. I actually don't mind the fact that it has a smaller engine. If it means that that weight is offset by the winch, I'll take it. I'd rather have that than a heavier front end in the vehicle. I love the wheels and I love some of the color options. Now let me know what you guys think in the comments below. A huge thank you to everybody watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Welcome to beautiful northern Michigan and welcome to Lake Huron. Now behind you are a set of Ford Broncos, but naturally I'm more interesting because I'm standing in a lake. No one wants to hear this as an intro.